so you're welcome back. It's now time for us to take a look at happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. And in the course of the week, the Minister for Finance, the Honorable Ken Ofrata, together with some officials of the Ghana Revenue Authority, paid a working visit to the Ghana Port and Harbors Authority. Plus, the fact that the Ghana Revenue Authority also in the course of the week organized a media engagement with various stakeholders to outline uh, some policies and some issues that they wished to share with the generality of the Ghanaian public. Plus, also that the uh, Port of Amsterdam international officials also paid a working visit to the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Let's take a look at these stories and more. The Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Michael Logoje, has confirmed the authority's support when it comes to implementing government strategy to block any revenue leakage at the Port of Ghana. He revealed that the modern conveyor system being installed at the dry bulk terminal in Takrade will do away with any concerns surrounding the under-declaration of bulk cargo volumes received at the port. Modern conveyor system that has been installed in Takrade will let us recover from this um, fear of losing because of the uh, under-declaration of bulk cargoes for exports. But that system, as it looks, will automatically calculate the, the volumes it is, it is carrying. And, and for Tema, the Waybridge project will help us for all our dry bulk cargoes that come in and also, and also go up. And we are, we are ready to support in this direction. The GPHA boss also said his outfit will provide the government with its detailed input for the operationalization of the no duty, no exit policy initiative intended to block revenue leakages. The issue of the policy of no duty, no, no exit, I think we have in our own discussions acknowledged that the ports are already no duty, no exit. Enclaves. There are already no duty, no exit enclaves, but maybe the methodology is what is now going to be new. Otherwise, that has been the, the practice in Ghana's ports. And we we are looking at that whole, having participated in the committee that, that drafted the, the implementation modalities, we are assessing them, and I think in the course of next week, we'll, uh, we'll be uh, presenting some information to you to, to help in the way forward in this, in this decision. These assurances were made when the finance minister, Ken Oforieta, led a delegation to visit the Port Authority to strengthen collaboration towards finding lasting solutions to challenges associated with revenue collection at the ports. Present at the meeting were the Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Ameshadai Ousuamwa, and Acting Commissioner of Customs, Seidu Idrisu Idisa. We tried to tighten things, and things are a bit different. As for example, what do we say? No duties, no no exit. Um, obviously, um, it will be sort of new and maybe it will create you know, some difficulties for the systems as you know them today. Uh, but if we look at the totality of what the country will benefit from, what adjustments then should we make? We've all gone to school enough to know that if we put our minds to something, it can be done. Okay, And um, the old ways are not going to continue to be the old ways. Um, so that's a challenge. How do we collaborate, speak the same language, and realize that you know, the, the, the resources that we have for the nation are a lot more than we perceive? The Commissioner General of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Reverend Dr. Emisha Dai Ousu Amua, has revealed that the tax revenue performance for September 2022 was 7.4 million as against a target of 7.1 million. This, according to him, shows a positive deviation of 4.6%, which represents 29.8% of its year-to-date performance. Speaking during an interaction with the media in Accra, he said customs revenue also grew nominally by 29.8% for the same period. Customs, particularly for this September, did very well and exceeded even the uh, stretch target by 246 million. If you take the stretch target, their year to date variance was 274 million. And in September alone, they exceeded it by 246 million. Therefore, reducing the year to date variance by about 240 million, bringing it down to around. 60 million. The Commissioner General said the authority is implementing a number of tax policy initiatives to boost revenue generation this year. We have introduced a junior taxpayers portal, basically a portal that allows you to log in to see your own tax activities. Again, we have also introduced the electronic VAT invoicing. It's connected to the invoicing system of the uh, 
merchants. And as the merchants trade, we see every invoice. To the extent that we can even see whether the person bought three things of milk or five things of milk, we can see everything. And we have introduced a new excise stamp tax authenticator, which is also an app. And it allows you to use your phone to test whether what is on the bottle is genuine or not. As part of the measures to improve revenue for the state, he said the authority will be piloting an e-auction module on the integrated customs management system. Again, one of the things that people have also complained over the years is auction. And I'm glad to also announce that we have finished the electronic auction and it's online. And our target is that from 15th October, we are loading some of the items available for auction on this system as a pilot phase. And every citizen is free to go there, look at the vehicle, see the picture, decide on what you want to pay for it. He said, in order to achieve its revenue target for the year 2022, GRA is adopting strategies to ensure that all loopholes are sealed with the rollout of rigorous enforcement and compliance measures. The managing director of the Port of Amsterdam International has led a delegation on a working visit to senior management of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. The visit, according to the group, was to intensify existing ties between the Port of Amsterdam and the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. The two parties shared their business portfolios. When it comes to the cargo, loading and offloading services are also provided by both ports in Tema and Taprani. We have our own steep doors, and then we also have private steep doors that we have licensed to operate. And this generates a form of competition. So we team up together with the private companies, with the terminal uh, operators. Uh, but we are acting in the umbrella of yeah. creating a business environment which is uh, attractive for, uh, for, uh, for other parties. Uh, so that's, that's our role. The parties also explored potential areas of cooperation, such as green ports agenda, commercial strategy of the ports, and optimizing supply chain procedures, among others. We are receiving some uh, proposals from the private sector to develop wind farms to be able to help generate power to, to sell to the port. Yeah. So we are discussing that, and I think at the national level, that has become a subject of interest. The particular agency has been designated to coordinate all the renewable energy uh, projects for the country. So I think that would be a very good area to learn, to, you know, how far you have gone yeah. and what kind of future preparation should be in place if you want to get there, what we should be looking at from today. The meeting concluded with both the Ghanaian and Dutch sides hopeful of signing a memorandum of understanding to guide future business cooperation. <laughs> 15 students from the Zambian Defense Services Command and Staff College have visited the port of Tema as part of a study tour to familiarize themselves with the social, political, economic institutions of Ghana. These included students from Zambia, Rwanda, Namibia, Botswana, Tanzania, Kenya and Sri Lanka. They were received at the security department of GPHA where they were briefed on the investments made to shore up security of the port and its environs. There is this company called Variant School of Learning from Israel. They have reps in Ghana who give us quarterly training. Once computer system or IT knowledge improves, so if there is any development or improvement, they come and they orient us. Deputy Security Manager at the Port of Tema, Samuel Ajete, indicated that initiatives embarked on by GPHA over a decade ago have yielded much results. The strategy we took was to deploy our own men on board all vessels to ensure Persons going on board, we have records on them, and then after close of work, we check them same down. So that at the end of every shift, we are able to detect if somebody is on board or somebody tried to hide somewhere. Team lead Kenel Nelson Moamba revealed that one particular interest of his outfit was to establish the synergy that exists between the national security and the port security. So we want to see whether there is a linkage between the national security as well as the security at the Ghana ports. So with that, we are trying to see what is it that can emanate from the Ghana port security which should be able to affect the 
entire national security. Directing staff at the Staff College, Colonel Esther Molando said she was impressed with what she learned. It actually gives um, a, a big assurance that apart from uh, the harbor authority which is looking at issues of revenue, we have got this uh, um, association or indeed um, this part which is looking at security. It is very good also to learn about uh, the issues of maybe store away and also goods that are smuggled in the country that uh, there are vigorous measures that are being uh, put in place so that we don't have such issues. It gives us a lot of assurance, not just of course for Ghana but also for Africa. All right, so those were happenings in the port and shipping industry in the course of the week. It's now time for us to take the word of the week. And the word of the week is brought to you to apprise you and bring you up to speed with the terms, that's terminologies and jargons we use in the shipping industry. This week's word is transshipment. Transshipment. A transshipment is when cargo or a container is moved from one vessel to another while in transit to its final destination. All right, so welcome back. It's now time for us to zoom into our discussion proper tonight. And tonight we're taking a look at the transit trade and we're looking at how we can bring about some interconnectivity to ensure that we do transit trade in a fluid and in a smooth manner. Now, the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority is deploying a system that they call SIGMAT. What is SIGMAT? We have brought in the Assistant Commissioner in charge of transit trade at the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority uh, to tell us more about this particular uh, system that they are rolling out and how it will propel uh, transit trade in our country and in the sub-region. And so it gives me pleasure this night or this evening to introduce to you uh, AC, that's Assistant Commissioner Peter Antobreofori. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. And welcome. Thank you so much. Yes, yeah, so we'll also be speaking to uh, Mr. Felix Kwache uh, via Zoom. Uh, Mr. Felix Kwache is the Principal Program Officer and uh, Head of Division and that's Tariff and Customs Procedures at the ECOWAS Commission. He'll also be joining us. Good evening, sir. Good evening and good evening to your listeners. Great. Good to have you, uh, Mr. Kwache. We're happy to have you. Um, just yesterday, one of your, your, your former schoolmates, um, uh, Elder Samuel Aja, uh, when he saw the poster that we we're going to have this show and that uh, you were part of the team, uh, one of the discussants, he, he said as you express, as uh, we send you his greetings though, and I also say he, he, he misses you, try and get in touch with you. And so, uh, if you know uh, Mr. Samuel Aja, your schoolmate in Legon, he said back in the day, I think that was 1987 or so, uh, he sent his regards to you, sir. Thank you very much. And my Great. greetings to Sammy. Great. I'll get in chat. In Absolutely. Touch. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. So let me uh, come uh, start with you, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Ofori, Antibu Ofori, and find out from you what the SIGMAT thing is about. What is SIGMAT? Thank you very much. And once again, I would want to greet your listeners and particularly uh, students from Surgery Secondary School and then also school Americans. Right. When we say SIGMAT, it is a French accolade, which means the interconnected system for the management of um, transit goods. Mm. Now, I would say again, when we say transit goods, uh, transit uh, consignment, mm. transit goods, um, it is part of the suspense regime mm. in the process of um, customs regimes. Mm. Now, the, when we say suspense regime, they are goods imported into the country, mm. but, good, uh, but the revenue or taxes on it are suspended okay. because, of, because the goods are not directly going to be consumed in Ghana. Mm. And so when you look at the transit trade, um, we have certain countries in the sub-region that are landlocked. Yes they do not have um, access directly to the sea mm. or to the world market. Mm. We're talking about the West African sub-regions. So yes. we're talking so about Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali. That's right. Yes. yes. Okay. And so um, the um, WCU had mm. made it, um, had uh, developed a system mm. where they can also assess the sea mm. at limited cost. Absolutely. As it is now, if we take a country like Niger, it is producing a lot of onions. Mm. 
But to even export the onions, it must travel all the way from Niger, maybe to the Tema port right. before, and the cost involved. Yeah. And so the system is such that those countries that are landlocked or those goods that are not going to be consumed in Ghana mm. directly, there should be a regime that will allow its movement. Mm. And so it is transiting. It is going away from Ghana. So those goods, we do not um, exact duties on them. Yeah. And so when we say Zikmat, mm. we are saying that how do we facilitate the movement of these goods? Mm. And so Zikmat, it is an interconnected system yeah. for the management of transit goods. Mm. It is an IT solution right. um, that will enhance communication mm. among um, the sub-regions, mm. the customs administration mm. in the sub-region. Mm. Yes. Okay. So, um, so far, have you started this particular uh, project? Have you started, have you rolled it out already? Or when are you looking at deploying it? Okay. So, um, so far in the sub-region, we have a country like Mali, mm. oh, sorry, uh, Niger, yeah. which is most connected. Mm. Niger is connected to about five countries, right. that is to Burkina Faso, to Mali, um, Cote d'Ivoire, Benin. And um, at now they are also doing very well to, 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 um, to connect to um, Togo. Right. When you come to um, Ghana, mm. um, in fact, the, the English-speaking countries mm. in the sub-region, mm. none of us have been able to connect. Right. And it is so because um, the, what the ECOWAS Commission seeks to do mm. is to allow for automation of all the um, customs administration in the sub-region. Right. And so right now, there are certain countries that are yet to automate mm. their system. A country like Liberia, Sierra Leone, mm. and even Gambia. And Ghana and Nigeria... Um, we changed our systems from GCNet to ICOMS. Mm. And so when we changed the system, we had to restart everything. Right. So presently, Ghana has not been able to roll that thing out, mm. but it is in the process. Right. Now we have limited communication with Togo. Okay. And we have also a roadmap designed with Cote d'Ivoire. Mm. And constantly we are meeting to ensure uh, that um, we, we rule on. Mm. And I would also say that the Ghana Link, which yes. is our service provider, yes. is also sponsoring and each day that um, they are constantly ensuring that um, it is brought to fruition. Mm. And mm. so we have given ourselves, in fact, we gave ourselves by November, right. by the end of November, mm. at least we, sh we should have been able to roll it out between Togo, mm. Ghana, and um, Cote d'Ivoire. Right. Uh, but we have not been able. And so at our recent meeting, which came off about just um, last week, last week, um, Wednesday, yeah. We have um, revised the the rule out to January, mm. so we hope that by the end of no by the the end of the first month of um, 2023, mm. we will go live. Okay, yes. all right. Thank you very much. Also, awesome. let me go uh, online and speak to Mr. Uh, Felix Kwachi and find out from you first of all whether you've heard about Sigma and what do you make of it. Thank you very much, and. Um, Good evening to my good friend Peter in your studio. Mm. Um, Segmat actually is an ECOWAS product. Yeah. It is an ECOWAS product. Therefore, it begins from the ECOWAS Commission. Mm. Yes. So I think uh, Peter has um, ably explained what Segmat is. Is mm. and indeed, if I may take you back, West African countries used a convention known as the Interstate Road Transit of Goods mm. (ISRT), which is a paper-based or is a manual-based transit 
system which operates in ECOWAS countries. So for quite a while, ECOWAS has been looking at leveraging on ICT to reform the transit regime within West Africa, mm. to improve it and to look at how to make it more efficient than it is. Mm. And as Peter explained, SIGMAT is an IT solution for the exchange of transit messages mm. between customs administrations based on the interconnectivity of the national customs IT system. Mm. So SIGMAT is an ECOWAS product which was launched in 2019. Mm. And um, as at now, the vision of ECOWAS is to get all ECOWAS member states, all 15 ECOWAS member states, connected to SIGMAT. Mm. So if I can go forward, yes, I would say that as at now, as at now, we have since 2019, we have five countries which have successfully deployed SIGMAT and using SIGMAT with amazing results. Mm. And these countries, we have Côte d'Ivoire, Niger, Burkina Faso, Togo, and Benin. So those are, those are four. Mr. Mr. Kwaji, those are four. You said five. Mali, okay. Mali inclusive, yes. okay. All right, sure. All no, right. not Mali. Not Mali. Okay. Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire, okay. Okay. Sure. Burkina, Burkina Faso. Yes. Niger. Yes. Togo. And Benin. Benin, okay. Sure. Five. five. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that yeah. is the first five block of countries mm. which have successfully ruled out SIGMAT and indeed. The results are amazing. Mm. The next five block, which will include Ghana, mm. Nigeria, Senegal, mm. Mali, and the Gambia, mm. are the next group of countries. Okay. So I think you've, you've, you've grouped them into uh, uh, Francophone and Anglophone. That's what I see um, here. It wasn't intentional. Okay. <laughs> it, it wasn't intentional, <laughs> okay. I must admit. All right. Yeah, it wasn't intentional, yes. Okay. So we have the next batch, which includes Ghana, and I think uh, uh, Peter has explained how far Ghana has gone yes. uh, in their bid to deploy Sigma. Mm. Okay, so uh, we have 15 member countries, and you say you are ro roping all of them in, and we have uh, the first five uh, as uh, Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, Burkina Faso, Togo, Benin, and then we have the second phase uh, that Ghana is involved. Ghana is inclusive. That's Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, Mali, and uh, Gambia. And I want to find out from yeah. you um, the f last five. When are they coming in? Indeed, for these five, which includes Ghana, they have completed all their technical and functional training, and their systems have been assessed, and they are ready. Now, the next five, we have already undertaken technical assessment mm. of, their state of, uh, of the state of their IT readiness. And they are also deemed to be ready. But mm. we need, they need to undergo training, both technical and functional training, mm. which Ghana and the rest uh, of the other five countries have already done. Right. All right. So you mentioned in your earlier submission that the first five, uh, that's uh, the Niger and, and its cohorts, um, they realized a lot of uh, positive and amazing results. That's the word, amazing results. Uh, when you say amazing, what does, mean? What, what does that mean? How was it like? And how are you able to describe that as amazing when we still have challenges? Good. Good. Now, um, as Peter explained earlier on, mm. that... Transit is a customs procedure and it's part of what we call the suspense regimes, mm. which means that duties and taxes on the goods are suspended whilst in transit. Mm. Now, you will admit that that itself has its own inherent risk, security risk as well as revenue risk. Now, what Segment does 
is one. It ensures that there is advanced transit cargo information. Mm. So if goods arrive in Ghana destined for Burkina Faso, once the goods leave Tema, Burkina Faso is aware. Paga border is already aware. They have all the information that relates to the goods in terms of the track number, the, the, the description, the quantity, the value, the seal number, every information. Mm. Therefore, what that means is that already Paga, which is the last exit point for Ghana, is aware of all the information that relates to the goods. Mm. So is Burkina Faso. And therefore, information is already gone. Right. And they are ready for the goods. Mm. Aside that, what that also means is that the goods are able to move much more faster or quickly right. through the various checkpoints. Mm. Because already the information is there. And what is important is that when the truck arrives, you check the truck number, the seal number, the, all the information that you can easily gather from the, the truck, and the goods will pass. Mm. More importantly, revenue is secured because you are able to forestall diversion. And once you are able to forestall diversion, revenue is secured. Trade is facilitated. Right. And overall, it engenders confidence in the transit trade. Mm. I must tell you that transit trade, even though it is an internationally recognized trade, mm. but because of the uncertainty and the dangers which are inherent in the transit operation, mm. there is a lot of fear. And all countries endeavor to put in place several measures to secure the revenue and also to ensure that security is also maintained. Mm. By so doing, trade is slowed down. The cost becomes very high. Right. At the end of the day, the final cost is passed on to the final consumer in the country of destination. Right. That is against international convention. Mm. The fact that they don't have Burkina Faso doesn't have a, 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 a cost. Doesn't mean that they should suffer. They should be able to make use of the coast, the Ghana coastline. So, at the end of the day, what Sigma does is to generate confidence mm. in the transit trade and secure revenue. Right. So, the, the results so far from all the five countries have shown increase in revenue. Okay. Speed in the delivery of transit goods. Mm. And data is well generated. Mm. Statistics mm. covering all these goods. Okay. So that is what I can say. And okay. indeed, let me just quickly add that Sigmat also covers rail transit. As I speak with you now between Cote d'Ivoire and Burkina Faso, they are using segments for real transit, not only by truck. Mm. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Please stay with us. We'll, I'll be coming back to you. But let me come uh, come to you, uh, Mr. Hunter Briofori, and find out. He mentioned, just uh, in his closing submission uh, this, that for this particular question, uh, that uh, Sigma brings about an increase uh, in revenue. It brings about uh, speed in delivering of goods, and it also helps in the generation of data and all that. What impact, significant impact, do you think that Sigma is coming to effect or make yeah, thank you. Um, as he has mentioned, mm. um, the whole, the Zygmat, the idea is to facilitate and enhance the economic level mm. of the sub-region. And so when revenue is protected and then there is limited leakages and each country is um, getting the needed taxes, mm. um, it is able to do its um, development. Mm. And so uh, if you should take a country like Niger, um, it is 
trying so hard to interconnect just because it has realized that um, the interconnectivity brings about um, revenue improvement. Mm. Um, that is one. And then the, the other thing is it reduces um, diversion. Right. Because presently there are certain um, business people, certain agents who have found loopholes in the present system right. and they are diverting goods. Yes. What they do is they try to fish out the thin numbers and the um, names of importers abroad. Okay. And then they use them to import the things. Mm. And so they put it under transit. So the goods arrive in the country as though it's, 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 it's meant going for transit. On transit. It's transit okay. And then somewhere along the line, they find a way of retaining it of in the country. Of retaining it, and, and that brings about un, uh, unfair competition. Absolutely. Because if someone is smuggling and mm. another person is paying uh, duty, mm. they cannot all sell at the same... Absolutely. Yes. yes. And so what stigma... No wonder smugglers will sell at a cheaper rate. At a cheaper rate. And meanwhile, the government is not going to benefit anything because... Because the government will not pay. collect duty. Yes. Yes. And so it's a, a serious business uh, that uh, the ECOWAS is doing. And it is to enhance cooperation among the sub-region mm. and also enhance um, custom to customs um, fraternity. Right. Uh, it will be easy for us to, or for let's say Ghana and Togo to exchange information mm. about goods whose movement is doubtful. Mm. And so the impact is um, a lot. Mm. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the ECOWAS would want to do now is to employ the services of a guarantor. Right. And so we would have a regional guarantor. Mm. And then the regional guarantor will have representative on all the transit corridors. Mm. And so that where there is infraction, he pays. And okay. so in the sub-region, we have that security mm. where goods that are diverted uh, the duties are secured right. in the sub-region. Okay. So these are some of the, um, um, the, the... The other impact is that it is going to weed out mm. those people who would want to comply. Mm. Uh, so, and also enhance voluntary, voluntary uh, compliance. Right. Yes. Okay. I would come back to the issue of Garanta. And I, I just want to find out from you... Um, does this guarantor comes from a public space or a private space? Um, the guarantor mm. is going to be appointed by the ECOWAS Commission. Okay. It okay. is going to go through the procurement international competitive tendering. Mm. And um, it will go, it will, um, um, I would say that, be broadcast in the new papers. Mm the daily papers in all the uh, countries in the sub-region. Right. And then so those who think that they have the financial muscles well, well, yeah. and will apply. Mm. And so then they will go, to, in fact, it is the members of the ECOWAS themselves who will do the evaluation. Mm. Yes. And then those who come out successful will be appointed mm. as um, and I'm sure it is not going to be too many, maybe one or two guarantors. Mm. Who will be is that an example of uh, a place where this guarantor system has existed and has worked for them? I think that um, the ECOWAS Commission mm. itself, uh, my brother, um, Mr. Kwachi, Mr. Felix, Kwachi yeah. can give you vivid um, history okay. on this. All right. But I think even in the East African region, mm. it is happening mm. and it is doing well. Okay. Okay. In fact, when the guarantor system is mm. well rehearsed, it is going to facilitate speed mm. because as it is now, if goods are moving from Nigeria mm. to, let's say, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, between the border of Nigeria and um, Benin, yes. the 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 security is uh, is a spite mm. and then from benin to togo mm. they have to process another one mm. between togo and ghana and then through ghana they have to process what but the regional guarantor when the guarantee is processed let's say in nigeria mm. that is what is going to be used to cover the goods across mm. from the country of departure 
to the country of destination. Right. And so it is going to afford speed right. and uh, things like that. So in, in, the, in the benefits that we're going to derive from Sigma, you mentioned uh, it, it's stopping diversion and all that, but I didn't hear you mention smuggling. Uh, is it going to uh, you know, help halt smuggling as well? Yes. In this case, I will, with respect to transit, mm. I would define smuggling as goods on transit mm. and then as it has exited, mm. say from through Ghana, let's yes. say the goose is going through um, Kulungungu, mm. and then it gets to, um, it's exiting through Kulungungu, mm. but it's going to Burkina Faso, mm. and then it gets to Kulungungu, it exits all right. Yeah. But between Kulungungu and Burkina Faso, yeah. there is a distance. Mm. And so sometimes they find a way of returning the goose mm. through different routes into Ghana. Mm. A case in point is with Togo, mm. where the government of Togo, in order to facilitate trade, has built a mini port mm. at Senkasi in the northern part of Togo. Yeah. And so goods that are moving from Togo port to Senkasi mm. attract no duty. Right. And sometimes they, they, they say that some of the goods are actually going through Senkasi mm. and transit to Ghana, Ghana okay. uh, so that they will avoid duty in Togo. Mm. And then they, when they are, um, so, so they are going to the warehouse, but on the way, it is diverted. Right. Or it is smuggled mm. into Ghana. Mm. And you deny the Togolese um, the government duty. the duty. Yeah. And Ghana, you mm. don't also report to the point of entry. Mm. And so we also not get the, so that is, um, what we call smuggling. Right. Okay. So with this system, the country of departure um, informs the country of destination that your goose is coming. Mm. And so they will be expecting it. Mm. And we give a specific time that the goose should reach. Right. After that time, the country which is exporting it, the country of uh, um, destination, destination yeah will report to the country of departure that the goose did not come. Arrive, yeah. And so the guarantee will be executed for the duties to be collected. Mm. And so the Zigmat, in a way, is also going to curtail the smuggling. Okay. In fact, the smuggling, the, when we say DP cars, let's say saloon cars mm. that are meant for transit, yes. there have been numerous um, times where my officers mm. have arrested a lot of the vehicles. Yes. And sometimes, after they have crossed the, um, the, 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 the point of exit, yes. they return through the numerous different routes, different then, routes yeah. then, then they come back. Mm. And the DVLA is also supporting because right. should you go there and your chassis number mm. shows that you have not paid the necessary duty, duties, yeah. they report to customers. So those are occasions where we find your men, uh, you know, on the streets, randomly checking vehicles uh, to see whether these are uncustomed vehicles or not. Yes, exactly. Mm. That is one. Mm. And then the other one to the um, Ghana link, mm. they provide the devices mm. and then they fix the devices in the uh, vehicle. Right. So those vehicles, that did not report at the point of exit, mm. but maybe they did not know that when you cut the device, the device still reports okay. to our system mm. that it is caught. So sometimes they will cut the device, mm. throw it away. Mm. And, and when it happens, mm. the device gives notification yes. to us. And so we go and fish for that device. When we get the device, we are able to extract all the information. Mm. And then we will know the agents the freight, the freight forwarder, mm. who put those goods under transit, we will right. know the importer, and then we will start from there. Mm. We put the whole consignment under investigation, mm. and through that, and we get them. Right. Okay, mm. let me go to Mr. Kwachi uh, on the phones and uh, uh, via Zoom and, and find out from him. Uh, Mr. Kwachi, uh, Mr. Ofori mentioned the Granta uh, thing, and... From a layman's perspective, my understanding of it is that uh, the grantor would serve as form of uh, an insurer 
and stand in to pay whatever fines that may accrue to an intransigent trader, you know, or so. Uh, is that right? If that is right, okay, uh, explain to us. And I also want to find out from you when you are appointing uh, this guarantor, because Mr. Fori said that you're going to be appointing one pretty shortly. Um, where will the guarantor be stationed? These three questions, if you can mask them up and uh, explain, it will do us a great deal of good, sir. Okay, thank you very much. To explain guarantee simply mm. is that, as Peter explained earlier, that in respect of transit goods, duties and taxes are suspended. Mm. They are not collected right. while the goods are in transit. Now, there has to be something like a shorty to secure those duties and taxes mm. so that in the event where they are not paid, then that shorty will then come in and make good their duties and taxes. Mm. So the guarantee is a bond, a bond to cover the duties and taxes which are suspended while the goods are in transit. Now, I think uh, it is important to say or to repeat what Peter mentioned, that when goods are in transit, from the office of departure or from the point of departure to the point of destination, mm. the guarantee or the bond that is issued to cover the duties and taxes to have a coverage enough to cover the entire um, length of the transit transaction. Mm. So, for instance, goods arrive in Tema, destined for Niger, Miami. What it means that the goods are going to go through Ghana, go through Burkina Faso before they reach Niger. And even in Niger, the duties may not be collected at the point of entry, but it will be collected inland. They will escort the goods right inland to mm. their main office where the duties on the goods will be paid. Therefore, what we are looking at is to have what we call community guarantee mechanism. Right. Where if a guarantee or a bond is posted in Tema, that bond is valid throughout Ghana, throughout Burkina Faso, right up to Niger. Mm. So the bond here covers three countries. Right. In the same vein, if goods leave Nigeria, destined for Cote d'Ivoire, the goods will cross Benin, Togo, Ghana, before reaching Cote d'Ivoire. Right. And therefore, if a bond or a guarantee is issued to cover the suspended duties and taxes, once they are issued in Nigeria, in Lagos, right. that bond is valid right up to Cote d'Ivoire. Okay. So, since in terms of territorial coverage, it covers four countries or three countries, what that means is that the guarantor or whoever issues the guarantee or the bond must be recognized in Nigeria, Benin, Togo, Ghana, and Côte d'Ivoire. Mm. The recognition also means that that guarantor must have a presence in all these five, uh, four countries. Mm. So this is how it's going to work. You have a community guarantor with a presence in all the 15 member countries. Right. Who has signed who has signed an agreement with the community, that is the 15 member country. Yes. And therefore, when goods leave Tema, destined for Niami in Niger, and the goods disappear in Burkina Faso, mm. the guarantor will have to make good the duties and taxes to the Burkina Faso government. Right. Because the goods have already exited Ghana, but did not exit 
Burkina Faso. Mm. So the community guarantor would have a presence in all the member countries, would have signed an agreement with ECOWAS Commission, and copies would have been sent to all the 15 member countries. Right. Therefore, if there is any infraction, depending on where the infraction occurred, the guarantor will make good the duties, taxes, and other liabilities which become due. Mm. All right. Have I answered all the questions? You have. You have. You Thank have. You. <laughs> you. you have. Um, I just want to find out from you once again. Uh, are there any, is there any legal basis for uh, this Sigma project that you are ruling out? Ah, thank you very much. I thought you were never going to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed, there is. Mm. There is. Even though Sigmat began as far back as 2019, it began as a pilot project. In December last year, mm. December last year, the heads of state and government of ECOWAS, mm. member country, adopted a supplementary act on ECOWAS Community Transit. ECOWAS Community Transit. Mm. So there is a supplementary act which has been adopted by the heads of states mm. and governments of ECOWAS. Right. A supplementary act is a law, it's a community law, it's an international law, which binds all 15 member countries to implement this and effectively abrogates the interstate, the existing interstate road transit of goods, mm. which we normally call the ISRT. Right. Okay. So um, I, I think that what you didn't answer with the previous question was uh, when you're appointing the grantor. Do we have any timelines for the appointment of the grantor? Uh, um, I wish I could tell you tomorrow, <laughs> but certainly... Um, we expect to have the guarantor in place um, latest by the middle of next year. Okay. The process has begun. And, uh, you know, because this is uh, has to do with money, mm. transparency. Transparency is extremely important. Mm. And therefore, ECOWAS will have to go through the various process of transparent uh, procurement and along the line all the member states will be involved in evaluating evaluating the various applicants mm. who uh, uh, would apply for that particular right work. okay all right all right so let's come in studio let me come to me so far he just mentioned money i just want to find out from you whether uh, the sigma thing implementing it in ghana uh, would bring about some additional cost to the transit trader uh, before you do that, I also wanted to find out from you uh, why or how our preparations are going as a country. Because you mentioned that we're going to be in phase two. Uh, you know, Ghana, alongside Nigeria, Senegal, Mali, and the Gambia. And I just want to find out from you how our preparations are going and uh, whether this whole arrangement of SIGMAT is going to be cost add, add, add addition. It's going to add some cost to, you know, what the, the uh, already burdened transit trader would be paying. Okay, so with respect to our preparedness, mm. um, the Ghana Revenue Authority mm -hmm. captioned or fashioned the whole assignment mm -hmm. into a project. And, and so, and the project name is Zigmat. Yes. The project owner is the Deputy Commissioner for Suspense Regime. James, okay. And that is Gilbert Ohene. Okay. Yes. And then I am the project. Gilbert Ohene? Yes. Okay. Gilbert, yes. Okay. And yes, I, I am the project manager. Yes. And the project coordinator is um, the assistant commissioner for IT. Okay. Uh, Madam Titi. Okay. Opare. Okay. And we also have um, representatives from Ghana Link. Mm. Um, because they are our service providers mm. um, to be part. Right. And um, together we form the Zigmat team. And then we are doing the project. Mm. And so, so far, 
we have gone through the functional training. Right. We have also gone through the technical training. Mm -hmm. And um, the Ghana Link have also purchased the server mm. that will house the Zigmat. Right. And they are also um, trying to integrate the Zigmat software into that of ICOMS. Mm. And so far, with Togo, they have been able to do it. And they are trying to interconnect with Togo. Right. We would have finished with Togo, mm. uh, but there are certain impediments. Yes, yeah. One of them is a language barrier. Mm. Where to place a dot, you need an interpreter. Absolutely. And so some of these things, and really it is where placing a dot or a slash, mm. um, and the computer, if you don't do it well, yeah. it will not give you the um, um, answer. Yeah. And each day, we are on it. And we also have created a platform between Ghana and Togo where discussions do with little or much difficulty. Mm. But that is what we are doing in order to overcome the impediment and rule out the right. Zima. Okay. With our connection with um, Côte d'Ivoire, mm. the World Bank, um, represented by one crystal. Right. Yes. Is doing all that is possible to ensure that we also do the the rollout and mm. so we have also created a whatsapp group and each day we are uh, talking mm. for now we have been able to exchange vpn addresses with um with Côte d'Ivoire also and we have also drawn the roadmap mm. we have shared the user guideline and so that is where we have reached now. Right. And the, the support from the management of GRA is... It's is overwhelming. Okay. It's overwhelming. Mm. And, I, and, and that of the I, I am Ghana link too. Okay. Yes, it's okay. very, very encouraging. Okay. Now, with the next question that mm. whether it is going to... Add, whether there's additional cost, yes. It is rather going to reduce cost. Okay. Okay. And nobody is going to pay anything. All right with respect to that. To that, okay. But the Zigmat is not going to do away mm -hmm. with our internal checks. Right. And so the fixing of the devices, mm. which the importer have to pay, mm. they will still continue to pay. Right. So that we can monitor the goods because the devices also afford the um, transparency, yeah, integrity right. of the movement of the goods. Mm. Yes. And so... Um, 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 there is not going to be any additional cost. Mm. All right. This is Aaron Port here on Metropolitan Television, and tonight we are discussing transit trade and how we can uh, use interconnected systems uh, to ensure uh, safe management of goods in transit, uh, the benefits that will accrue uh, to all of us thereof. And uh, with me in the studios is Mr. Uh, Peter Antrebreofori, who is the Assistant Commissioner in Charge of Transit at the Ghana Revenue Authority. Also joining us via Zoom is Mr. Felix Kwache, who is our uh, Principal Programs Officer and Head of Division, that's the uh, Tariff and Customs Procedures at the ECOWAS Commission. We're going for a quick break. When we bounce back, we'll continue the discussion. Please do stay with us. Every now and again, Goyle makes good things happen. This time, Goyle has introduced Super XP Run 95, a higher grade fuel loaded with additives and yet sold at the same price as normal fuel. Go Super XP Run 95 enhances engine performance like never before. It maintains the engine by keeping it clean from carbon deposits. Go Super XP Run 95 is designed to burn slowly and thus improves fuel economy, making you save money after several kilometers. Go Super XP Run 95 gives you a smooth driving experience that is less vibrations. Fill up with Go Super XP Run 95. Now there's no need to pay more for any higher grade fuel. Goyle has that sorted. Goyle, good energy. Because you see, without our taxes, we wouldn't have good roads, good schools, better hospitals, street lights, and other very important social amenities. When we pay our taxes, we give our children free and quality education. Tell my money too small. Why should I pay my tax? Look, small. 
sell it for. It doesn't matter how small or big your business or income is, you still have to pay your taxes. The little taxes from each and every one of us, when put together, could give your community clean water or that deprived school with tables and chairs. Please pay your taxes. It is your responsibility. It is your civic duty. It is the law. Impressive factory. If only I had listened to you, I wouldn't have been in this mess. That devastating fire virtually wiped out the whole factory and my warehouse. Remember my misfortunes last year? Serene insurance assets all risk fire policies that I took were there to pay for my damaged stocks in the warehouse. And my machines that were affected by the floods have been replaced. My accident vehicle is back on the road. Thanks to Serene Insurance Motor Policy. Suddenly my goods are on the IC covered with the marine cargo insurance policy. I was just telling Ajima about Serene Insurance. Oh, Ajima. Tell him more. As a road contractor, I make sure I do my contractors all risk insurance for the projects and then workers compensation for all the workers on site with serene insurance they will make sure they will cover your unknown tomorrow today serene insurance a new face of insurance call us now MPS Terminal 3 is Africa's new state-of-the-art container terminal at Tema Port. For manufacturers, agro-processors and traders, the new port means business can be done faster. This infrastructure boost will improve Ghana's port handling capacity, connect more trading routes and oil the engine of growth for the economy, creating greater opportunities across all sectors as Africa's markets merge and become the largest trading block globally. MPS, we connect, you thrive. All right, so you're welcome back. We're now going back to the discussion. And remember, we're discussing the benefits of uh, interconnectivity for, of systems, uh, inter the benefits of interconnected systems for the management of goods in transit. And like I said, with me in the studios is Assistant Commissioner, uh, that's Customs of Shingana Revenue Authority, in charge of transit, that's Mr. Peter Antibrail for you. Also joining us via Zoom is Mr. Felix Kwashi, who is uh, senior, uh, Principal Programs Officer and Head of Division that's uh, Tariff and Customs Procedures at the ECOWAS Commission. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Um, we'll continue with the discussion, but I've been told by the production team that we can activate the phone lines for them to call in and uh, ask questions and contribute to the discussion. And the number uh, to that is 0205528353. Uh, 0205528353, the number is already on your screen. Uh, you can call in and uh, contribute to the discussion. So um, let me come back to, uh, I think you were on when we went for the break. And I just want to find out from you, you mentioned Ghana's preparedness and uh, how far we've come, some of the activities we've undertaken and all that. But uh, mostly when you're rolling out some of these projects, stakeholder engagements cannot be overlooked. Have you held some stakeholder engagements to sensitize uh, those that you work with that this is what we are rolling out and this is the role you're supposed to play to ensure that we have uh, it successful? Uh, yeah. Um, I would say that with the stakeholders' engagement, mm. we have the Interstate Route Transit Committee. Mm. And, we, um, and it is a big platform where yeah. we discuss transit goods. Mm. And we discuss a lot of this, and presentations are made on that platform. Right. And we also have the Shippers Council Committee. It is made up of the Chamber of Commerce of um, both Burkina Faso, Niger, Mali, um, their Shippers Authority, and also the Transport Owners, mm. and a representative from the um, Freight Forwarders. Yes. They are all on the platform. We have mm. the police and all those who work at the port. All right. And okay. so on that platform, um, presentations are I'm made. Indeed. Aside that, we have been able to have engagement with the freight forwarders mm. as an association. Right. And we also have had another engagement with the uh, transporters. Mm. As an association. In fact, um, uh, the, the transporters is a lot. The, the association 
It's a lot. Right. And they are very disciplined in terms of reporting to hear right. some of this. Okay. Fortunately, we have also recently launched the driver's guide. Okay. And the driver's guide also teach mm. foreigners right. and even uh, drivers mm. what they should do and what they should not yeah. do on our routes. Okay. And so the engagement is going on. It's ongoing, yeah. But we also have internal stakeholders. Mm. That is the customs. Yes. You know, when we deploy this um, system, mm. it is the custom officers at the exit point and the point of departure that will implement, that it, yeah, implement sure. them. Absolutely, yeah. And so we have to have proper training, training for, for them. them. Okay. In having proper training, we have to get good content. Good. And so we have to design the content book. Mm. And then we have to put, we have to do the training, trainers, the, those, the trainers, yeah, yes, sure. to train. Yeah, trainer of trainers. Yes, on the trainer other. of trainers. Yes. And we want to do this uh, um, in harmoniously with both um, Togo and yes. Cote d'Ivoire. Right. So that we would all be on the same page. Okay. But because we are still having uh, challenges with the interconnectivity, mm. we want to finish the interconnectivity. Before you, before. you know that. Okay. Let's uh, go on to the phone lines. I understand from Taifa we have uh, Benjamin uh, who wants to contribute to the discussion. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Please flow. Uh, my, my greetings to Mr. Okori. Mm. Yes, yeah, so um, I would like to congratulate them for the good work that they are doing. Mm. And my question is, I've been worried, I mean, for the past years, this transit um, vehicle that applies on our road mm. from Accra, Kumase, through to Paga, and so on and so forth. My question is, um, do they have any contribution? I mean, the transit vehicles or the, um, tri uh, these are neighboring countries mm. who do this Transition. Mm. Do they have any contribution in constructing our road, or do they have any contribution for the construction of our roads? Because okay. it seems their vehicles are, I mean, damaging our roads a lot. Mm. So I don't know maybe if I'm lacking behind. So okay. if Mr. Um, can brief me about that. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you very much, Benji. Uh, good to have you on the show. Uh, he wants to find out whether our neighbors, the landlord countries, contribute to uh, construction of our roads because most of the vehicles, the heavy-duty vehicles we have, are from there. They come and they ply our roads and, you know, we, we have our roads, you know, uh, getting spoiled all the time. So he wants to find out from you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen that. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. I don't know how they're coming, but maybe you can, you can help Facilitation out. of trade. Yes. It's regional agenda. Mm. And it comes at a cost right. and commitment mm. to each of the nations mm. that sign agreement to it. Right. And so it might be one of our costs, one of our commitment, one of our sacrifices Absolutely. to ensure that another nation is also not imperiled yeah. by the mere fact of its um, location. Yes. So that is one. Mm. But the second um, thing is that mm. The average Ghanaian has the chance to take the, op um, the opportunity available mm. with respect to the transit trade. Right. And so, for example, most of the transitors, mm. they um, patronize our filling stations. Right. And they buy the fuel yeah. and then to feed their vehicles. Yes. And it is a source of employment also mm. to... Mm. to us mm. with respect to the food vendors at the port mm. and also when the goods come to the port at least some administrative charges yes. are paid and you will bear with me uh, that our port has been expanded mm. a lot and um, the transit business in a way generate indirect um, yeah. employment for us absolutely not nothing at, if, for nothing at all at least for our drivers yes and okay. yes, so um, that is it. Okay. That is the commitment 
we it's have. Written. Then okay. the indirect yes. advantage. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll go to uh, I'll go online and pick Harriet from Kumasi. But then let me let me uh, tell Mr. Kwachi that I'll be coming to you. And when I come to, you, I just want to find out from you whether by ruling out the Sigma initiative, are uh, you took into consideration the fact that there's always this issue of internet connection, internet connectivity. Sometimes the downtimes are much many. Uh, you know, much more uh, than the good times or the up times, if, if I can use that word. And so I'll be coming to you for that. Whether you took that into consideration before ruling it out so that every country that's implementing it will imp implement it fluidly and seamlessly. But let's go into the phone lines and welcome Harriet. Uh, she's calling us all the way from Kumasi. Hello, Harriet. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for calling in. Uh, please shoot. Um, um, I'm just calling to say um, this program is very educative and thank you Mr. Ankudra for liking us on this program. I wish most of the youth will listen to the program because it's very insightful. Thank you very um, much. So I just want to promote your good work and say hello to Mr. Ankudra for it. My regards to him and I'm enjoying the show. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, there's a commendation, not a question, though. We are grateful to you, Harriet, uh, all the way from Kumasi, uh, for calling in. So let me go to Mr. Uh, Felisquache. Hello, sir. Yes. Yes. Did you hear the question I, I posed to you? Yes. Yes. Great. That is the all right. in internet connectivity. Yes. Um, admittedly, we have um, internet challenges in our region. Mm. Nonetheless, uh, we must also recognize that all the customs administrations in the 15 member countries have their IT systems that they use in the clearance of goods. Mm. Therefore, what is happening is to link these IT systems of the various countries. So, unless the Let's say in Ghana, the entire ICOMS is down. If the ICOMS is not down, and the, the Burkina Faso uh, Asikuda is also not down, then it means that they can connect. Mm. And to get around this also, we have developed what we call Sigmat Mobile, right. which will be just the system the Sigma system, on a tablet or a mobile phone, right. which can also be used, especially those who go on the road. Mm. Let's say not Tema, but if you go al along the transit corridor with the mobile phone, with the application on it, mm. you can then access all the information and do some transactions even on the mobile phone. Right. So that makes it quite handy and also enables us get around some of these problems. Mm. But let me say that once, let's say, the, the entire custom system is not down, mm. maybe at the border it is down, but then at the headquarters it is not down, mm. then certainly Sigmat can continue to work. Mm. It can continue to work because it is actually not border to border but it's a country system linked or interconnected with another country's entire system. Mm. So that is a way to get around this uh, localized uh, internet downtimes. Mm. So once it's a national something, uh, we are able to, to surmount some of these uh, challenges. Mm. But as I indicated, so far since 2019, it's been going on very well. It's been going on very well. But of course, there certainly has to be a plan B where in case where everything is down, there has to be a, a what we call the fallback method to, mm. to use. But mm. so far, so good. Mm. So far, within the past um, three years that yes. um, Sigmat has been in operation, uh, it's been working very, very well. Okay. All right. So let me just find out from you. I'm curious. I just want to find out from you uh, in terms of percentages. Uh, what would you say is the level of uh, interconnectivity as far as Sigma is concerned within our sub-region? Um, as I indicated, uh, as at now, what 
we are doing is to connect one country to another, one country to another along the transit corridors. So Ghana is connecting to Burkina Faso mm. and then to Togo. Mm. That is her immediate neighbors. And I believe they will also link up the, with Burkina Faso and then to Niger because Ghana is central because the port of Tema is used by Mali, it is used by Burkina Faso, it is also used by Niger. Mm. And therefore, it is important to get connected with all these ones. And mm. I think Ghana has it as part of their plans to connect with these four countries. Mm. But more importantly, we as ECOWAS also intend to link up what we call the Abidjan Lagos Corridor. Mm. The Abidjan Lagos Corridor covers about 80% of trade within the entire West African region. Right. And therefore, it is very, very important. Mm. Now that Cote d'Ivoire has segment, Ghana has segment, Togo has segment, Benin has segment, Nigeria has, but yet to deploy. Mm. As soon as Nigeria deploys, then we connect, we connect the entire five countries uh, along the corridor. Mm. And that will be a major boost to intra-community trade within the West African region. Okay, great. Uh, please don't go yet. I'll come back to you. But let's go on to the phone lines and welcome Rahim, who's calling us all the way from Tema. Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Ibrahim. I'm calling from Tema. Right. Sure. Please shoot. Yeah, my... Okay. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Okay. Uh, my questions go to uh, Mr. Ofori. Yes. Uh, please, I want to know about uh, Mr. Ofori and his teams at the uh, border, border point. Mm. Uh, because sometimes we do a transactions and it will get to the border. And the officers at the borders will take the movement sheet and stamp the movement sheet and give it to the, our reps at the border, telling them that the transaction has been closed. And in a week's time, they will bring us our standings that our transaction has not been closed. But if some of the officers to, uh, the in charge should talk to his officers at the border, they rather put it on us with the fruit forwarders. Mm. Then they will, block, they will block us. As of last week, our companies has been blocked. We no, we've did not work for three days. Wow. So I don't know what are they going to do about that. I don't know whether if this uh, segment that they are bringing will help us to facilitate this outstandings and those whatever, whatever they are calling. Mm. So my humble request to Mr. Furi, if he could please do something about this outstanding for us and the, the officers at the border should also do their work. Or if they can give us a, a giant scream at the border point, mm. our, reps, our reps can be checking whatever transaction has closed. Yeah. Then maybe they can go to the giant screen and check, oh, fine, this, I've submitted my document to this officer. He has ended the transaction. But we don't have that. They will end up descending on us, the freight forwarders, that our items has not exited. We did diversion, then your company will be blocked. Moreover, it is the officers at the borders. They are those who, are, they are those who did that. Right. So please, if Mr. Ophori can... Us about point this. well made. Point we well made, it. Ryan. Thank you very much yeah. indeed. And our regards to the people of Tema. Yes. Yes. Uh, um, what do you have to say? Yes. In the first, Sometimes they, 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 they indicate that their transactions have, have been closed. Then a, a week later, they said, no, it wasn't closed. Yes, it is true what mm. he's saying. And as you even asked about the internet connectivity, mm. sometimes by the time they, they get there and mm. the internet is down, Right. The officers wouldn't want them to stay or delay them. Mm. And so they will say, okay, let me process your, your things for you manually. Mm. And then you can go. Mm. So that when internet is restored, I will do it. The internet will be restored and still there will be work piled. Yeah, so they and sometimes so forget. They, they, they forget. Mm. 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 Yes, mm. that is one. The other one, too, is um, that the pressure of work, especially at Paga, mm. you know, when the, the port expanded mm. and 
the fan customs rehearsed its procedures. Yeah. And um, the time of release was enhanced. Mm. Um, a lot of um, importers love to use the thermopot. Uh, but it is also an influx of um, um, tension mm. at Paga. Right. And so sometimes the overwhelming nature of the um, work there will compel them to process manually for them. Mm. And then they will take their time to input. In the course of inputting, yeah. then they will, and um, they may forget. Right. Mm. But he was saying that the blocking. Yes. Yes. In fact, um, uh, we would want to say mm. that each time uh, that uh, a freight forwarder put a consignment on transit, mm. for example, the, the the customs have been so. Uh, liberal right. to the extent that they give them 10 days from um, the port of Tema to the northern part of or the modern, uh, northern part of Ghana mm. to exit. And we are saying that after the 10 days, if you have not exited, you will be blocked. Mm. And that is one. Two, some of them place goods um, for example, they are going to Paga. Right. And then they will put goods that are going to, let's say, Hamile mm. on Paga's track. Right. So when the goods get to um, Paga right. and they process for it to go, they don't there will get... be a consignment yeah. in it that will not be covered. Yes. And we will not know where the goods have passed mm. because mm. even when they go to Paga, they did not tell the officers that. That they were goods yes. meant for. And so oh, it will okay. stand against your company mm. that you have for not exited these goods. Right. But in their minds, because the goods have exited at Paga, mm. they think that is all. So right. when we block them, they don't understand. Understand, okay. Yeah. So the blocking mm. is that if even you have about three consignment that have not crossed, yes. you are liable to blocking. Okay. We block them. To tell them that we are serious about this rollout. Mm. And then after some time, we unblock them mm -hmm. and warn them that we are giving them one month. Yes. If you know that you have our standings, mm -hmm. go to the port mm -hmm. and reconcile. Right. Because after one month, when we block you, yeah. until you have actually... Um, and the reconciliation and all The that. reconciliation, we are not going to give you. Okay. And it is one of the measures to ensure that mm. all transit goods actually exit and go to the country of destination. Great. Okay, let me go online and, and uh, put a final question to Mr. Felix Kwashi. And final from you, when you are expecting, um, you know, this whole Sigma thing to be fully implemented in our sub-region, say? Just in two minutes yeah, or in one minute, because we are running out yes. of time already. Yeah, certainly by next year, we expect all countries to be on board. Mm. By the end of the first quarter, we expect all the five, the first, no, that's the second five countries. Yes. To all of them joining. That's the Ghana group. Okay. And then uh, by the June next year, we expect the last five to also join. To join, okay. So next year, by the middle of next year, we expect all countries to be on board. Great. Okay. Thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us all the way from Nigeria. We're grateful to you and our regards to the folks at the Equals Commission. Uh, we've been speaking to Mr. Felix Kwachi, who is Principal Program Officer and the Head of Division Tariff and Customs Procedures at the Equals Commission. Let me come to you, um, AC, and your final words in terms of uh, how soon you are wrapping up your preparations as a country. Yeah, in terms of how soon, we would want to say that um, um, between Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire mm. and um, Togo mm. um, by January mm. we should and we are also optimistic that we can do it mm. and then from there because the other countries do have the same system as Togo mm. and Cote d'Ivoire yeah. it will not be too difficult for us to implement okay. and now my last word is that the Commissioner of Custom mm. will also want to establish this first port rule mm. he want to um, quicken it yes. uh, so that where the internet issue mm. um, the, the the first point rule basically is to collect revenue on behalf of the country of destination, destination. Okay. and so all these things are done just right. to enhance street facilitation right. and also to 
help um, the Zigma to rule out. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Assistant Commissioner Peter Antubre Ofori, Assistant Commissioner in charge of transit at the Ghana Revenue Authority Customs Division. And that's how we draw the curtain on tonight's edition of High on Port here on Metropolitan Television. Remember the discussion has been centered on the benefits of interconnected systems for the management of goods in transit. Uh, the name is Kennedy Mona. We entreat you to um, uh, watch the abridged version of the show on Ghana Television on Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. We say maximum thanks to our sponsors, um, Ghana Revenue Authority, Guel Company Limited, Serene Insurance, Ghana Link, as well as MPS. Remember, the show is powered by the Ghana Port and Harbour Authority, GPH. God willing, next week, we shall bounce back with another wonderful edition, and we entreat you to have a super, super, super week ahead.